These are $5,000 worth of true wireless earbuds. The creme de la creme. The premium. The ultra pricey. Let's go through the pros and cons. Starting with the newest on this list, the Sony WF-1000XM5. Goedendag, we are DHRME. Dudes hearing responsible for money elimination. It's a good one. All right guys, these are the Sony WF-1000XM5s. And instead of doing a one-way review, we'll do a 16-way because that's what we now do apparently. We rate important features on this scale, tier S being the best. And boy, we can't wait to start with the first feature. ANC. We rank the XM5 at the top of the class in tier S. It's finally in the same class as Bose QC earbuds and the AirPods Pro Gen 2. Another impressive feat is the battery life, advertised at 8 hours with ANC on. But like most things, we here at DHRME need to test that. And we did. We got 7 hours. An hour less than advertised, but still a respectable amount of juice. Oh, and you get two additional charges from the case. You can also pop the charging case onto a wireless charger. Speaking of which, we really like how compact the case is. Easy to slip into any pocket, and the buds are not too bulky either. You do get touch controls, which are very responsive as well. No miss hits or ghost taps. You will need to use the physical button on the case to put the buds into pairing mode, but after that, you get a full multi-point feature set. The WF-1000XM5 can stay connected to two devices at the same time, and this time it can do that while still using the LDAC codec. And what we've come to love about Sony is the fact that you can pull the connection from a previously paired device. So just look up the XM5 in your Bluetooth device list, select it, and the buds will get connected. In the app, you can also find a device list which you can use to switch connections and fix a connection to a certain device if you don't want it to keep switching. The killer Sony headphones app give you so many options, like a wear sensor so the audio pauses automatically when you take a butt out of your ear. You get 360 reality audio and spatial audio with head tracking too, and a beta feature called Find Your Equalizer, a super user-friendly way to create a custom EQ based on your listening preferences. The best part is you can see the output as an EQ preset and tweak it. Sony's packaging is again very environmentally conscious and so is the material use on the XM5. Okay, let's not beat around the bush and talk about the sound quality. Guys, this is Sony we're talking about here. First off, these are really loud. My usual listening level is at about 40% on LDAC and these are at about 20 to 30% on my Galaxy Z Fold 5. So you'll be covered for volume. And speaking of LDAC, it's there as per usual and DSE Extreme 2, which I'll be honest is a very niche feature. Overall, we're going to say that these are a tier A. The sound signature works for multiple genres and that 5-band EQ and clear bass slider along with Find My Equalizer gives you all the customization you'd need. There are a few caveats though, which we'll talk about in the cons. First, let's talk about the pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, test the one, two, three. How did the mics perform? Well, let's just say that we are super happy the XM5 is nothing like its predecessor, the XM4. In both noisy and windy conditions, you can hear my voice clearly, and most of the background noise is suppressed. When speaking softly, some of the low end in my voice gets confusing for the noise suppression algorithm and can be difficult to understand. But overall, if you talk at a decent volume, these buds will do just fine. And if you're a fuckman, then you get the basic answer hang up controls, but no volume. The volume control is only for audio, but it wouldn't be Sony if there were a few other gimmick, I mean, features for calls. You get head gestures to nod and shake your head to answer and hang up a call, and the ability to hear your own voice more clearly when you're on a call. There are a few things that make the WF-1000XM5 less desirable. Firstly, the transparency or ambient mode. In our testing, we could barely notice a difference with its predecessor. It's still ranked at tier B. It's fine for hearing the surroundings and having a quick conversation with someone, don't get us wrong, but the ambient noise level is lower compared to not wearing the buds at all. So that passive seal, it's still at work. However, in true Sony fashion, you get a bunch of ambient mode related features, most of which we never use. You get adaptive sound control so that the ANC can change depending on if you're sitting still, walking, or in public transport. And there's speak to chat, or as we like to call it, stop singing out loud. It's a feature which will pause your audio and turn on the transparency mode if it detects that you're trying to speak or sing. You can also enable this mode if you hold down one of the buds, if you've set it to the right control scheme. 
and those controls, we are happy you can do a lot without having to compromise. You can do play, pause, do track control, uh, call up your voice assistant, speak to chat, etc. But now there's also volume control. Why a but you ask? It's a good thing, isn't it? We at DHRME don't like big butts. You need to quadruple tap the bud for volume control. I don't trust my mental arithmetic and hand-eye coordination to be able to pull that off flawlessly every time. You miss one tap and boom, you've changed track. Wow, that rhymed. The worst part is that the control schemes are fixed, meaning you can change what a particular tap or long press does. What Sony gives is what you get. And finally, there's the comfort and fit. There's a fit test you can do in the app and Sony gives you four sizes of tips in the box. I ended up picking large for my right ear and medium for my left. The tips are a sort of memory foam material so they can create an amazing seal. But extremely comfortable, they are not. I could really tell that I had them in my ears and pushing against the inside of my ear canal. And the earwax really likes to get up all in the creases of the foam material. Also, if you have a dead XM4 lying around, don't use their ear tips on these. They're not interchangeable with the XM4 due to a mesh on the tips. And those sound caveats, out of the box, they've definitely gone a little hard on the bass. Unfortunately, in true Sony fashion, that's actually the mid bass, and that can lead to the mids being ever so slightly muddied. The treble is a bit brighter, and overall, like all Sony wireless products, there's some definite tweaking that's required here. Now that that's out of the way, let's start with the most expensive and work our way down. From the XM5 to the X, uh, no, not, not Elon Musk's new name for Twitter, but the Bang & Olufsen X, which definitely stands for expensive. For the money you spend on an X, you're absolutely right to expect a lot. You get a premium design with an aluminum ring and glass touch surface on the buds. The case has some heft and is made of metal too. Those touch controls offer the basics like play, pause, track control, ANC mode toggle, and a less basic control, volume. You know we love them volume controls at our fingertips. The stem-shaped earbuds fit well and are definitely secure enough for workouts. And Mr. Bang and Mr. Olufsen don't be your playing about workouts. The X is equipped with an IP57 rating, giving you excellent dust and water resistance the best on this list overall. And for the extra money, you do get extra features. The Buplay X supports Android Swift Pair as well as Microsoft's version of the same. And not just two ecosystems, it can stay connected to two devices at the same time. And it has an in-ear sensor to automatically play pause your music if you take a bud out of your ear and put it back in. And then there's the sound. Luckily, you're not left with a nice looking piece of tech which sounds bad. The sound quality is top notch with controlled bass, clear mids and accurate treble. The listening modes and presets are useful too. You get some customization with the Biosonic disc which you can move along two axes. Overall for sound, these are a tier S for sure guys on this list. The aptX adaptive codec delivers solid resolution and that battery life ain't too bad either. We got close to seven and a half hours with ANC enabled, way above the six hours that BNO actually advertises. How's the resolution on those microphones you ask? Well, you know what time it is. Let's pop those popsicles, ice those icicles and test those. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. In noisy conditions, they're just okay. The voice sounds processed and you hear the cars wishing by. If you're soft-spoken, then don't bother with these buds. And it's an okay option in breezy conditions if you really need to take that phone call. But the fuckman inside of you is itching to know more, right? You get the basics as well as volume controls and the ability to change ANC modes while on a call. Nice. The only thing you'll be missing is mute control, but you can adjust the amount of your own voice on the BioPlay X, which is always handy. And just like every X, there are reasons why you would leave this one too. The BioPlay X comes with active noise cancelling and a transparency mode. The X came in at tier C for both its ANC and transparency. Not fantastic, but not trash either. If you're someone who's new to ANC headphones, then you'll be satisfied. Otherwise, take a look at some other options we have in this video. The X cancels out the low end better than other frequencies. You do get a three-step slider in the app, but the adaptive ANC mode didn't really do anything for us. There's also a wind reduction setting that might as well not exist. The normal mode is the best for wind. Overall, a mediocre performance in this category by Bang & Olufsen. On transparency though, the white noise is fortunately very low. But their confidence is oozing in the way they've tuned these buds because apart from the Biosonic disc and the presets, you don't get any custom EQ options. 
Although BNO uses premium materials, the design in and of itself isn't particularly distinctive or eye-catching, just your run-of-the-mill stem-shaped buds. On top of that, that glass used is a fingerprint magnet. So unless you're wiping them down after every touch control, they'll be looking a little less premium. Oh, and those touch controls can't be customized. You're stuck with the control scheme that BNO gives you. We did like that BNO gave us a set of comply tips in the box, but it was just a single pair, not multiple sizes. And with the standard silicone tips, we noticed that the earbuds can get uncomfortable after an hour of usage due to the tight seal it creates. That nice in-ear sensor, it worked like a charm for us, but in case you're less charmed about it, just know that there's no way to disable that in the app. And rounding off the nitpicks, we find the charging case to be on the bulkier side. And we don't get why BNO forces you to create an account to use their app. I guess you're still the product, even if you are paying big money for the product. A firmware update takes about 30 minutes with you having to keep the app open during that length of time. And that big money can be a turnoff to some, retailing anywhere between $350 to $400. Diet som poka, as the Danes would say. Okay, time to go from Denmark to Japan. The ZE8000 is final audio's way of appealing to their audiophile consumer base with a sprinkle of modern features like active noise cancelling. Before we get there, let's talk about the design since the Scandinavians aren't the only ones that know a thing or two about it. The buds and case have a unique paper-like texture, feels satisfying to the touch and also doesn't catch any greasy fingerprints. The case has a solid sliding mechanism. The buds themselves come with five pairs of silicone tips in the box and provide a good seal and secure fit. There's no official dust resistance though. With that combination of grippy tips and a decent water resistance at IPX4, you should be fine if you feel the need to get sweaty or use them in a bit of rain. Just be careful with dust. And you can use either bud on its own if you like, and the touch controls give you clear voice guidance so you know what you're doing. Before we get to the ANC, we do like the wind noise reduction feature. It actually works at keeping out wind noise when listening to music outdoors. Overall, the connectivity of the earbuds while listening to music has been great with no issues to report. The companion app called Final Connect is um, keeping very much to the stereotype of being minimalistic and mainly sound focused. Okay, let's talk sound, shall we? In a nutshell, excellent guys. The sound signature is flat and a good option for critical listening. And the sound is superior when you pair it with a Snapdragon sound enabled device like the Asus Zenfone 9 we have here. And you know what's super overlooked on most Bluetooth audio products? Volume control. These let you control volume from the buds. Not a big deal, you say. Well, Final also gives you a fine grained volume control option in the app for those suffering from volume OCD. Overall, we would say these earbuds sound great and we put them in tier B. And they're less fatiguing for longer listening sessions too. But how long can people listen to you when you use these for phone calls? There's only one way to tell, by listening to the popsicles, icicles, and test. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test us, testing, one, two, three. We think that the microphones fared better in windy conditions than in noisy conditions. The whooshing sound of the car sounded very dramatic and not very pleasant. The wind, despite being audible, wasn't too troublesome. In terms of Fuckman controls, you get the basics to answer and hang up, change ANC including wind noise reduction, but no volume or muting. We did face a few connectivity problems on phone calls. Sometimes the right earbud would stop working and other times we had trouble moving from one call to another. Time for the dark side of these buds. The case as well as the buds are very light. It adds to the comfort but also makes them feel cheap. And you won't be carrying them around in your pocket that easily because the case is big and bulky the biggest on this list. The earbuds are also pretty chunky and stick out considerably from your ear. The tight seal the buds create does wonders for the sound quality, but not so much for the comfort. After about an hour of use, they started to feel uncomfortable. That large charging case only charges by USB type C. There's no wireless charging on board. Unfortunately, you only get 10 hours of battery life from the case. The controls are great on paper, but not customizable. And there's gestures like tap five times to call up your voice assistant. There's no in-ear sensor on board either. And something we've noticed when using it with an iPhone is that the volume is noticeably lower compared to an Android phone. Speaking of different phones, the ZE8000 can only stay connected to one device at any one given time. There's also no Google Fast Pair or alternatives to it. And for an audio company, it's strange that the EQ is limited. I mean, it looks parametric, but 
It really isn't because we couldn't find a Q factor to play with. You can only adjust four bands at any given time. Then there's the 8K sound feature. In our testing, we couldn't hear a significant difference. The biggest difference you'll hear is when you use them with a Snapdragon sound supported device. But let's not mince words here. You're getting a flat sounding pair of buds, but they're not fun in case you were looking for that. Okay guys, we started off saying final release the ZE8000 as a pair of audiophile true wireless buds keeping up with the times with active noise cancelling. In our DHRME rating, we ranked both the ANC and transparency at tier D. No home will be written to about this. That's for sure. These are in the same class as some much older buds like the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 2 and the Jabra Elite 85T. The ANC lets in quite a bit of the low end and in the transparency mode, voices were not very clear and the low end was still very much canceled. They're just barely usable to quickly be out and about and be aware of your surroundings. Just like the battery life numbers, as opposed to the advertised battery life of five hours, we got about four and a half hours. That was the final point we wanted to make. The Bowers & Wilkins PI7S2 are the second generation. We reviewed the first gen and let's just say it didn't end well. But this generation is quite the step up. Well, credit where it's due. Bowers & Wilkins gives its audio products a very consistent kind of sound. APTX adaptive and a big hearted sound signature. Spiky treble, big bass that hits hard and a super fun sound. To the extent where you can kind of see where the fandom for this iconic brand comes from. Especially at lower volumes, I think these are one of the nicest sounding buds on this list. To boot, these are comfortable and secure and with the dust and water resistance rating at IP54, well, you can work out just fine in these. If you pair with multiple devices, you can pull connection from any of the previously paired devices. Also using the app, there's a wear sensor to protect you from audio FOMO and there's wireless charging to alleviate battery anxiety. The case isn't tiny, but it's nice and flat, making it pocketable. It also has a huge button which can be used to check battery life and some other features. And no, it's not the same button as the pairing button, that one's tiny. The Bowers & Wilkins boasts a unique feature which kind of betrays its target demographic, we think. You can use these earbuds with any device that has a 3.5mm headphone jack. The case of the earbuds is used as a transmitter, no pairing required at all. A niche use case, but ingenious nonetheless. You can go a step further and pair the case to a pair of Bowers & Wilkins headphones. Then the noise cancelling. It's reasonable. At tier B. It's not setting new standards, but just about competitive. Hey Rowan, can we find any other good things to say about these buds? Um, is that a segue to talk about the microphones? Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. All right, take a Bowers, Bowen Wilkins. The PI7S2 did a fantastic job in both noisy and windy situations. And the samples clearly show how it was to actually speak to Rowan on the phone too. If the noise and wind was very strong, you would hear it a little bit. Impressive. If only the Fuckman controls were impressive too, we would almost have the perfect buds for calling. You only get the ability to answer and hang up, guys. I'm sorry, man, but these buds, their powers be Wilton. To start off with, that sound. Yes, it's good, but it's really a very specific tuning. And if you're not into it, well, good luck to you because there's no EQ in the app to tweak it. Also, there are just three tips in the box, not the smorgasbord of tips like you get with most of the buds on this list. Since there's nothing to grip onto, taking the buds out of the case isn't the easiest. The controls are limited, no volume control to be found on the buds. The device polygamy is also limited with just one device you can connect to at any one time. And that app, Bowers & Wilkins requires you to sign in. Really? I know it's 2023, but come on. The battery life also isn't up to 2023 standards. The stated battery life is five hours with ANC on, which is on the low side to begin with. And in our testing, we ended with a measly three hours and 45 minutes with ANC on. And there's something funny that happens with these tests too. One bud still had 50% left in the tank while the other one was dead. It's clear that there's a primary secondary architecture going on here. Every time you pull these buds out of the case, one of them gets assigned as the primary and the other bud connects to the primary one. It's real easy to test. Just start playing music, disable the wear sensor, move these buds apart and voila, one of them stops playing, proving that it was depending on the previous one. It's clear that they're using a really old tech platform for this and this leads to some hiccups in real life. For example, if you want to play music with just one bud, sometimes there's a gap as the secondary reestablishes connection and the ANC in the app is also confusing as hell. You can toggle between ANC and off, all right, that makes sense, or auto ANC and off. The pass-through mode is something you can't toggle from the buds, but from the app only. 
and there's a scale to adjust it but weirdly enough you can enable this pass through mode at all times meaning it will stay on when ANC is on. A very confusing implementation. It's nice to stand out but this makes no sense whatsoever. The transparency is passable. There's a slider which is pretty much useless at the lowest setting. Putting it up to max also pumps out much more white noise. Now we put this at tier C, similar to the Bang & Olufsen, but there's a world of difference. The X may have lower volume, but it's quite clear. Whereas the Bowers & Wilkins is a bit louder and scoops out the low end and the high end, due to which you get this kind of nasal effect on the sound, making voices sometimes unintelligible. It also doesn't help that you can't enable transparency mode from the buds, only the app. It's either on all the time or never. So who are these buds for? Well, for someone who likes the Bowers & Wilkins sound. For everyone else, there's MasterCard. Or there's the Technics AZ80. Techniques AZ80, whatever. We called these buds a beast in our review due to the impressive spec sheet. So let's break it down. Starting with the companion app will be enough to see what we're talking about. The customization is just madness. Custom EQ and EQ presets. Touch controls, customization, including volume, mute, ANC, voice assistant, and more. Dials to tweak the amount of ANC and transparency. Customization of voice prompts. Multipoint. Decide what happens to your audio and touch sensor when you take the buds out of your ears and put them back in. Ability to turn your buds off automatically after a certain amount of time if you're not using them. Different latency modes depending on if you use them for music or video and a couple of others which you'll get into. But this is hands down one of the most comprehensive apps we've seen. A beast. Let's unpack a few of those features we mentioned. Multipoint. Techniques has a unique and in our opinion the best implementation of Bluetooth multipoint because it supports Google Fastpair. Nah, that's not it. I mean, it has it, but we love the fact that the AZ80 can stay connected to three devices at the same time. Most other buds with multipoint cap out at two devices. And suppose you've got more than three devices, then you can just pull connection to by selecting the buds in your Bluetooth settings from a previously paired device. You can also easily put the buds into pairing mode by holding down both buds while they're in your ear. No need to use a charging case. Love it. These buds support LDAC. But we'll talk about sound in a bit. But with LDAC and ANC on the buds, these are advertised to last four and a half hours. But in our testing, we got closer to six hours. Under promise, over deliver. And the charging case supports wireless Qi charging. A beast. The buds are built well and don't feel cheap. The buds are IPX4 rated, so no sweat if you want to sweat. You get loads of tips in the box to get your fit just right. And once you do, they fit securely and comfortably. And those touch controls not only come with many control options, but they're responsive too. But you know what was most responsive though? Our experience using these buds in transparency mode. Despite the tiny bit of white noise on the whole, the Techniques AZ80 did incredibly good. Tier S, we finally have a worthy competitor to the AirPods Pros. The ANC came in at tier B for us, rather middle of the road, but not bad. And for those of you relatively new to the ANC game, you're gonna love these. Now Techniques AZ80 sound great in many ways. We personally could not enjoy certain genres like hard rock due to some compression artifacts, killing the distortion and the mids. This is why Techniques would never be my first choice for that kind of music. And that's the only reason we would put it in tier A, one of the lowest on this list. But we can totally see how this doesn't apply to many of you out there. Check out our full reviews for details. And the rap we did. And if you like three ways, you like the AZ80. Three devices at once, just blow connection made. Speaking of rapping, one thing we love about making calls using the techniques is the just my voice feature. Its ability to magically cut out background noise and isolate your voice is just awesome. It's crazy that it's turned off out of the box, but it works. No gimmick. Here, have a listen. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice. It's a bit breezy and windy, nothing crazy. What did you think? Yes, Rowan's voice did sound somewhat processed because of the Just My Voice feature, but the feature makes the call go from piping in all background noise to letting in very little, and it does it well. Even strong winds were blocked, and that's often not easy to do. A very good pair of buds for calls in challenging conditions. Kudos to techniques, but this was based on the samples. In my personal testing with cellular and Teams calls, I've had some people claim to have a hard time hearing me or hearing random engine-like noises when there were none. And let the fuck button inside of you be at ease. 
the AZ-80 can handle pretty much any control on calls. Beyond the basic answer and hang up, you can also change volume and mute the microphones straight from the buds. You can even change the ANC mode, but you will need to customize that control in the app. And since we got the dark color of the AZ-80, let's turn to the dark side, shall we? The only other color option you have is silver. We think the silver looks cheap and find the black a lot more premium looking. In our review of the Techniques AZ-80, we said the build was solid all around. That's still very much true, except that we noticed the case to be creaky when squeezing it. Not sure why you would do that, but something we wanted to share after our honeymoon phase. Not like our honeymoon, but like with the buds. Come on, you get it. What you won't get if you're colorblind is how much battery is left in the case. There's just one LED indicator that changes color. That same LED does some funky things at times. It would sometimes blink for no apparent reason, even with and without the buds in the case, and even with sufficient charge on both. And with great multipoint comes great sacrifice. If you're all in with that three device multipoint, then you won't get LDAC. If you drop down to dual device, then you'll get a best effort LDAC at slightly lower quality. But if you want that LDAC goodness at its full glory, then you'll have to pick a single device. Another post honeymoon finding of ours is that there was the odd hiccup with connectivity. Sometimes it would be connected to a device, but the audio wouldn't be heard when playing something on that device. Not ideal and something to take into account. And in a similar vein, all those controls you get for audio and calls will definitely take some getting used to and training that muscle memory. We guess it should be easier if you don't have too many buds you swap through or your memory is better than ours. And if you need to discipline that weak memory of yours, these buds come equipped with a rather stern teacher, the techniques teacher to be precise. We're not a fan of how harsh the voice prompts sound, a loud screeching voice. Luckily, you can turn down the volume of those prompts in the app as well as only get a notification sound instead of noise cancelling. So who are the techniques AZ-80 for? For someone who has way too many devices in their life and who likes all those extras. But not if you're into rock or metal. Speaking of metal, here's another set of pricey earbuds with a metal build. I mean, if Kendall Roy is using these, they gotta be expensive, right? The Master Dynamic MW08 come with a unique and classy design made of stainless steel. The best part is that the case is available with multiple color options and has three LED lights to display three different bits of information. The battery percentage on the left bud, the right bud, and the case. Nice. The earbuds themselves are this ceramic and glass piece that are quite the looker with the Master and Dynamic logo on them. What we absolutely adore on these is the fact they've done button controls, but they've done them very uniquely. The left bud features a volume rocker and long pressing the buttons change ANC modes and transparency modes. Master and Dynamic hopes to master our dynamic ears with five different sizes of silicone tips. We definitely found our fit with those five. Again, the hardware continues to be top notch with an IPX5 rating. And you know what? We love the sound even though a lot of others didn't. These are definitely on the bassy side, so if that's what you're into, these got you covered. The aptX adaptive codec does great for those of y'all whose phones support the codec. And for you fruit company phone owners, AAC is also on board. Overall, we put these at tier A for sound. How about the sound for your voice though? Here, have a listen. Pop, pop, pop to go. Eyes, eyes, eyes to go. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. In noisy conditions, they're not great. You get those whooshing cars again, the voice sounds muffled and not very loud, and there is this constant white noise as well. In lighter, windy conditions, you'll be fine, but when the breeze started to pick up, you could hear more of the wind, and the clarity would take a hit. Now, that's what the samples say. This wasn't always the case in our real life testing though. I have often been asked to change the buds I was using because my voice sounded far away or muffled. And this was in reasonably quiet conditions, mind you. Not sure how Matson was able to have that conversation with Kendall, but I guess he needed to be nice to him at that point. But speaking of real life fuckmanen, let's talk controls. You can answer and hang up as well as use that volume button on the left bud. What you cannot do is use that same volume button to change between noise cancelling modes and you also cannot mute the mic from the buds. It's not all masterful with the MW08, starting with the more minor annoyances. The autoplay pause sensor is a bit too dynamic, as in it malfunctions quite often. Luckily, you can disable it in the app. Speaking of app and connections, we still have situations where the app randomly disconnects. The initial pairing and setup was a bit too dynamic to master as well. What also was a real standout is the battery life with 10 hours on the buds and an additional 30 from the case. On paper. We did our DHMA battery test with ANC on and got almost half of that advertised 10 hours. We got 5 hours and 45 minutes. Yeah, the numbers can be quite dynamic. 
And Master and Dynamic Sound is very rather static because there are zero options to customize the sound in the app. No EQ, not even a preset. And from software to hardware, let's talk about the size of the nozzle on these earbuds, of course. While the oval shaped nozzle is about six and a half millimeter at its widest, somehow the combination with the ear tips made it larger than many of the competitors and always caused Rowan some discomfort. Although I seem to be fine with them. And then that lovely stainless steel case. We just wished it was scratchless stainless steel because here, we think Master and Dynamic knew that as well and therefore provides a cloth pouch for the case. Staying on the case, these also come with no wireless charging. And when we're talking about ANC and transparency, the performing is very middling. We put the ANC at tier D and the transparency at tier C. So who are the Master and Dynamic MW084? For someone who likes touching cases and buttons and making an appearance on succession. Another $300, another really great sounding set of wireless earbuds. The Audio-Technica ATH TWX9 or the Arthrotrix 9 comes from a popular audio brand and audio, they do right. The first thing that strikes you is the unique soft texture and stylish shape of the case. A subtle Audio-Technica logo and those five fancy LED lights make quite the first impression. So too the 12 different sizes of tips, not just for width as is usually the case, but different lengths too for insertion depth. We like the attention to detail and this is unique. After the box come the buds and these buds, there's something extremely appealing about them. The design is shiny and subtle and this two material idea in this black colorway that we have here. And what's that on the bud? Yes, it's a physical button and a touch surface. And as if the hardware weren't enough, the app gives you the ability to customize every touch and press. Having two control surfaces on board, the list of things you can do with your audio is kinda technically unlimited. And all the smart goodies are on board, wireless charging, an in-ear sensor, all the assistance you could ever want. Sony's 360 audio along with the aptX adaptive codec. You can even configure the volume control between 16, 32 and 64 steps. The final ZE8000 is the only other set of buds on this list that does that and we slightly prefer that implementation. But these buds are also really comfortable for us using the default tips. But we'd bet that these would be the buds on this list that have the highest chance of being comfortable for all. And that sound, well, tier A, what we especially liked about it is the customization in the app in terms of EQ presets and the five band EQ. And just the capability of the drivers. And what about all those drivers driving by when you're taking calls? Wow, our segues suck. Well, this is how you sound on a call. Pop, 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 ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing. One, two, three. Okay, these samples are one thing, but let's start with our real life experience. Not good. Even at lower volumes, folks complained about being unable to hear us. And that was in a quiet room. And while it did okay with whooshing cars, any kind of high pitch sounds like a paper bag made the voice incomprehensible. In windy conditions, you're taking a gamble. If there is noise and wind, these did quite badly and the voice would get cut at several moments in a conversation. But if you do manage to use them in terms of controls on the buds, these are a fuckman's dream. You can configure these buds to control volume, mute, and the ability to change ANC modes. Oh, and you get side tone too so that you can hear your own voice when speaking instead of feeling like you're hearing it through your skull. So guys, these are the mics, but what else? That ANC, it's probably over-engineered. You get a bunch of different profiles that you manually have to choose from. Airplane, office, home, and an optimized. You think that optimized would, you know, optimize for the spot you're in. But no, the optimization happens once and wherever you go, you take that optimization with you. So if you've optimized when you're at home, that same optimization will be used when you're in a crowded street. Not optimal. And what about the performance of the Audio-Technica for ANC? Tier C. And transparency? You get five levels of it. It's okay at tier B. And while the overall volume was okay, it was just kind of boosting the high bass and mids which made it sound like you're in a cave. And that charging case, well, sexy looking, is also a bit plus sized. So the thicker end might struggle to enter your tighter pockets. And while that case and buds look great when they're new, but we worry that they don't look that great when they've been in the pocket or in wetter parts. Also, these might be the only buds here that don't have quick charging. And while on charging, the battery life. We got a measly five hours and 15 minutes with ANC on our brand new unit. That degradation isn't going to look good over time. 
That app, while great, works only one device at a time. So if you forget your first device at home, like I once did, you might want to reset. So who's the Audio Technica Astrophysics 9 for? For the Audio Technica O files. Someone looking for unique but subtle looking buzz that sound great and can be customized till the cows come home. Oh, and if you're a control freak. Well, if you didn't know which buds cancel out the most noise, you've either been living under a rock or using the Bose Quiet Comfort 2 earbuds. This is absolutely the headlining feature here. I mean, we define our tier S using these buds. While most buds these days eliminate lower frequencies well, Bose does mids and highs better than any other, getting you closest to creating your own personal sea of tranquility. That's also what we name these buds. Yep, the app lets you name your earbuds, but also do a host of other small tweaks. And Bose has been pretty good about updating the Bose Quiet Comfort 2. You can see a list of all devices in the app and also switch. There are some of the extras you expect, not all, but we'll come to that in a bit. The in-ear sensors present as is custom ANC modes. You can save and access at the tap of the buds. You get swipe volume controls and touch controls. In terms of sound, the buds themselves sound pretty great. An easy tier A. There's a three band EQ for those smaller changes you may want to adjust and that bass is very satisfying. The buds are much smaller than the first generation and are quite comfortable. They use stability bands to make sure the buds stay in your ear and these buds can stay in your ears for the advertised battery life of six hours with ANC on and thankfully our testing confirms that number two. Hop, hop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. So even in quiet conditions, there was this slight reverb to the voice and it sounded like it was coming from afar. Kind of weird and not something we should be hearing anymore on buds this new. In noisy conditions, they're fine. You hear the cars, but the voice is still clear. The QC2 does handle wind very well and you barely hear it. Overall, a mediocre performance in the microphones department. Such a shame for a brand who's known for their noise canceling, which uses microphones to do that as well. But what would the fuckman say to these buds? Not bad, actually. On calls, you can adjust volume from the buds. You can't mute the mic though. You can toggle between ANC modes, which is very useful. And you also get a four point skill to adjust the self voice feature. You can adjust how much of your own voice you'd like to hear when on a call. Oh, another nifty feature if you choose to enable it in the app is auto answer. An incoming call will be answered if you put an earbud into your ear. Process efficiency at its finest. Now the sound is good, but what we found it lacked was really the treble. It's quite recessed and even the three band EQ doesn't help help it deliver the same level of sparkle as many of the other buds on this list. Continuing with some of the issues, the ANC and transparency actually have some of the highest white noise of all buds on this list. While the ANC is great, the transparency is just fine. Overall, the white noise aspect is really disappointing for such a premium device. And those stability bands we talked about, well, they made us quite boast. They're finicky to use and get a bit annoying. It doesn't end with the shape of these buds. No, no, no. If you do anything more than gently feel these earbuds to control them, they cause a very short but very annoying noise in your ear probably the result of the ANC mics trying to compensate. And the case, while being pocketable and a far cry from the chungus of a case in Gen 1, is still one of the largest we have on this list. And what does that size get you? Well, quite decent recharge time, but no wireless charging, something even ultra budget buds these days offer. From sound to light and lots of it, the JBL Tour Pro 2. We love these earbuds, really love them for a few reasons. First off, what about that case, huh? With it getting harder and harder to distinguish between noise cancelling earbuds, JBL Tour Pro 2's case runs a fully functional app. You can change ANC modes, EQ presets, start a timer, enable spatial sound, do a bunch of stuff just from your earbud case. The case also means you don't need to pull your phone out of your pocket or even better, you get access to all the smart features even if you're connected to a dumb device like your washing machine. What? Your washing machine doesn't do Bluetooth? That's probably a good thing. And here's something else your washing machine probably can't do. Connect to two devices at once. You get multi-point and the ability to directly pull the connection from a device you've used before. In our view, a seriously underrated feature. But all that means nothing without solid performance, right? Well, JBL delivers pretty much across the board. The battery life is solid with our test coming in at just under seven hours with noise cancelling on. And what about that noise cancelling? It's tier A. We also really like the sound and the flexibility that JBL offers. I mean, just for sound, you get a custom 
engineering test, amplification compensation for each year, a custom 10 point EQ, three types of spatial audio. We'd love to give you the full tour, but the bottom line is that we'd slot it in at tier A for sound too. That app has many other excellent features. These buds are super comfortable and have a good fit as well to boot, a workout friendly IPX5 rating, and you get that auto play and pause with a sensor which you can disable in the app. Oh, and yes, you get fairly decent microphones. Here's a sample. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, bicycle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. So in noisy conditions, the Tour Pro 2 handles noise relatively well. But the issue is with Rowan's voice. I mean, it's beautiful, just through these buds, it sounds slightly muffled and the volume is on the lower end. That's just the aggressive noise suppression at work here. In windy conditions, the buds pick up a bit of the wind, but overall Rowan's voice is still audible and reasonably clear, even when he speaks softly. The slightly muffled quality of the voice is still there though. You're gonna be reasonably happy as a fuckman in terms of call features. You get a voice aware feature to tweak how much you hear yourself, and you can even adjust it from the case like a boss. And yes, you can mute these directly from the buds while on an active call. Unfortunately, you can't change the touch controls from the app, nor can you change volume or ANC mode from the buds, only from the case's touch screen. All right, we've been building this up, so what are some of the cons of this Pro? Well, that case will be bulging your pockets up, that's for sure. It's one of the biggest cases on this list and we understand that it's packed with tech. Also, that case. It's a great toy, but you've always got your phone on you at all times. Why not just buy something with a smaller case and a lower price? We said these perform well and the transparency is serviceable at tier B, but not in the great category. And those controls, you again have to choose from two out of three. Noise cancelling, volume and media playback. And while we think these sound great, you codec junkies aren't going to be super thrilled. You're getting plain old AAC and SBC. Doesn't matter to us, but we know some of you care. So there you go. The JBL Tour Pro 2 is great if you want a nice set of premium buds that can do everything without having to bother with apps on the phone. These earbuds were a surprise smash hit for us. The not so well known status between 3 A and C. I mean, who names their buds between? I'd go for amazing or incredible, but no, the sheer humility of- We're not sure if this is a pro or a con, but these earbuds have a unique look to them. But beyond the subjective, let's talk about the subjective. They come in two colors and despite their larger size, the earbuds fit well and stay in place. Thanks to the grippy silicone tips and the general shape. With the IPX5, you can definitely work out in these. They were comfortable to wear for extended periods of time and quite secure in the ear too, probably due to the silicone and wing tips. They feel quite well built and the buds let you touch them in two ways, buttons and touch surfaces. We think it works quite well, all things considered. The battery life with ANC is decent. We got just under six hours in our battery test. The case is also very pocketable and there are no finger gymnastics required to put the buds into the case. These are the only uh, yes, the only buds on this list that do both touch surface as well as buttons. And you know what? It works. Multipoint, not perfect, but for the most part, satisfactory. What also works? Wireless charging. And all that audio wizardry with three drivers? Damn, the sound is solid. Timbers were excellent and you get a few excellent EQ presets as well as an excellent eight band EQ in the app. I'm saying excellent quite a lot, aren't I? For more, check out our full review. But for now, let's give sound quality a tier S to the status and move on, shall we? You get most of the basic features you expect from an app. And what we didn't expect from a pair of audio focused buds, tier A noise cancelling and tier A transparency performance, which again, can be switched using the buttons on the earbuds. And what about the microphones? Well, we're happy you asked because... Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. There is some aggressive noise cancellation on these buds. So if you're in a noisy environment, you need to speak loud and clearly, else your voice will get cut out. And the situation isn't much different when there's wind. You barely hear the wind, but if you don't speak loudly, the chance is high that your voice is barely audible as well. The Fuckman controls are average, guys. You get volume, but no muting from the buds or the ability to change ANC modes. They will kick into transparency by default. If you really want though, you can change the ANC mode from the app. Well, we're not gonna leave you hanging in between, guys. These buds ain't perfect. First of all, the Frankenstein meets ring doorbell look ain't for everyone. And those touch controls were far from perfect, with us missing some touches now and again. The companion app, when switching between devices, tended to fail on us a little bit. There's no in-ear sensor to automatically play or pause your music. 
that multipoint was a bit problematic in certain situations, especially when using browsers on a Mac. The app is pretty basic, and while the transparency amplification is pretty good, unfortunately, so is the white noise. And if you're in a quiet place, it can get a bit annoying. So is the status between three A and C for you? Well, if you're looking for a unique design, stellar sound, and a pocketable, powerful A and C experience, then probably is for you one of the best buds on this list. Going from a relatively unknown brand to the most popular brand on the planet, the Apple AirPods Pro 2. And man, did Apple kill it. Yes, we know they ain't perfect, but they take a lot of boxes, starting with their insanely good active noise cancelling. Just a shade under the bows, but in a much more comfortable and well-polished package. Volume controls are a significant addition, and the only buds in this video that have not only S-tier ANC, but also S-tier transparency. You hear very little white noise, which makes it possible for you to wear the AirPods Pro 2 for longer stretches of time. And you know what? Contrary to what Apple haters think, the AirPods Pro Gen 1 and Gen 2 are some great sounding buds. Battery life on buds is still good at about 6 hours, but from the case you get 24 hours, which is pretty amazing for something so pocketable. They also come with all that spatial audio magic, which works great for certain albums. But this is certainly Apple preparing the audio ecosystem for spatial computing. Overall, we'd say these are tier A for sound. And what about the microphones? Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, 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 test, test, testing. One, two, three. Okay, so we were going to totally trash the AirPods for microphone tests. They sounded terrible in both noisy and windy conditions. There were weird sounds and the voice was muffled and even sounded robotic at times. But then, 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 we remembered they weren't that bad when we tested them in the past. We then, then, then realized that we used them with an Android phone. <laughs> and lo and behold, we actually could hear a difference compared to an iPhone. Here, have a listen. Pop, pop, popsicle, eyes, eyes, icicle, test, test, testing, one, two, three. Maybe you shouldn't buy these if you have an Android phone. In terms of Fakman controls though, you can change volume by stroking that stem. You cannot mute the mic from the buds, but you can change ANC modes by squeezing that same stem. That's it, we're finished talking about squeezing and stroking stems. But hey, hey, let's put on the Apple hater hat for a moment. These buds are great in that wall garden, but once you're out of it, even for a short walk, forget about multipoint or any kind of app. Those spatial audio features, forget about them too, and forget about forgetting about them. You can't find my without Apple's operating systems. And what about that iconic design? Well, at this point, it's kind of blantastic. Not even a black color? Well, I guess that's how they'll get the sheeple to buy Gen 3, or Gen 4, whenever the spatial marketing runs out of steam. And the lasting, but not the leasting, these got lightning. Who are these for? Well, I think you know. <coughs> Apple fanboy. <coughs> okay, let's go to a crowd favorite. If you've just seen initial reviews of the Sennheiser, let's hope. Sennheiser has secretly made three updates to these buds over the last year. Two that we love and a third that we could have done without. To begin with, what we really love about the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3 is the price. These are kinda towards the middle of this list and that's great because we love a lot of other things too. These buds have the Sennheiser branding which means the sound is going to be a feature and man a feature it is. What I've always loved about Sennheiser products is their timbre or the, the fidelity to you know natural instruments this especially comes across in acoustic instruments more than electronic ones and voices for my kind of music these are a joy to listen to over aptx adaptive and aptx2 i also get a nice bass punch in fact on aac as well like with iphones they sound pretty decent making them a good pick for you apple users out there who want to look beyond airpods remember those upgrades we talked about sennheiser has upgraded three things since launch multi-point functionality with a device list in the app. The initial three band EQ is now a five band EQ and the hearing test has also gotten an upgrade and takes into account volume levels too. And you know what, for sound, the Sennheiser is a clear tier A for us. The battery life situation is also fairly decent. Every time we tested these, we somehow got more than the stated seven hours with ANC on. Also, you get three additional charges from the case, which is great. What else? Um, oh yeah, the touch controls. Very responsive, give clear auditory feedback, and you can control everything on the buds, including volume. In terms of ANC and transparency, both are pretty good. Both are tier A, in fact. 
And thank you, thank you, thank you, Sennheiser, for having an anti-wind option in the app. And thank you even more for remembering that setting every time you take the buds out of the case. But, oh right, we're not talking about the buds just yet. Sennheiser's products are also longer lasting with spare parts available, replacement buds, and a general organization-wide focus on sustainability. And what about the microphones? Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Okay, we got another aggressive pair of buds here, guys. The background noises get killed really well, but so does the low end in the voice. So as long as you speak loudly, you'll remain clear. The voice will start to fall apart the moment you mumble or speak softly. In this particular sample, the wind was pretty strong, but apart from hearing the wind slightly, the voice remained intact and clear. Overall, a decent pair for sure. And so are the Fuckman controls. You can change volume and the ANC mode from the buds. It does also have the nifty feature where it will auto answer the call the moment you pop a bud into your ear. You just cannot mute the microphones from the buds. Now the app is well designed, but now and then it does tend to not connect to the buds, even when the buds are connected and even when audio is actually playing. Weird. When it comes to build, the case is less chunky than its previous generation, but it's still one of the girthiest on this list. And you know, for easy sliding, the girth matters more than the length. For pocketability. What did you think, you girthy mind? Objectively, I love the Momentum 3, but somehow it's not something I use and that comes to one subjective reason, the fit. I mean, I'm not sure what it is, but the Momentum 3 and the two before it have always had a very tenuous fit in my ear and that's not for a lack of trying. Also, they've been quite uncomfortable. Good earbuds are like underwear. They need to fit right since they're intimate pieces of tech touching your skin for longer periods of time. And all those ear wings and tips have helped a bit, but not to the extent that I'm super confident with wearing these for workouts. Even Sony's WF-1000XM4, which everyone complains about, fit me better. So, yeah. That's really it. We recommend the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3 if you're looking for a good balance of value and performance across multiple ecosystems. And if they fit you. Guys, just because we're going down in price doesn't mean we're going down in quality. Quite the opposite. Oppo. Oppo? Oh yeah, the Oppo Enco X2. So what's so opposite about the Oppo Enco X2? Well, to us, S tier sound, absolutely smashing. Now, just like many other buds here, there's some tweaking involved. First, you can choose between LDAC, LHDC, and AAC codecs. Second, you gotta enable the Enco X Classic preset in the app. Third, you gotta do the hearing test called Golden Sound and then you are golden, my friends. We absolutely love the Oppo Enco X2 for sound. Easily our favorite for treble, bass, and soundstage performance after those three adjustments, tier S. And with all that, how do they look and fit? Well, the looks are a bit of an AirPods inspired nothing burger, but the fit is excellent. Great comfort and grip. Volume controls on stem, check. Squeeze for track control, also check. You get a choice of ANC strengths from adaptive to mild and the transparency offers you a mode to focus on the voice alone. And that case, so compact and it offers wireless charging. And the buds, well, they're water and dust resistant at IP54. Also, there are all the bells and whistles your heart could desire with an in-ear sensor and a gaming mode for lower latency. And the case supports fast charging too with five minutes of charge providing up to two hours of use. And in terms of connectivity, you've got more whistling and more belling. You've got Google Fast Pair, you've got Multipoint. The Hey Melody app is also incredibly easy to use. And speaking of Hey's, Pop, pop, popsicle. Ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Call controls lack feature like microphone muting and side tone adjustment. Even though the Oppo has aggressive noise cancellation on its mics, it's still able to maintain the same voice volume even when speaking softly. Impressive. Only downside is that the voice does sound a bit processed and muffled. But you can definitely pick these for windy situations. The Fuckman gets volume and ANC controls, but no mute or side tone. Hey guys, we promised the pros and cons, and co and cons, no? All right, so these buds underperform on a few aspects. First off, the ANC when it was released was decent for its day, but today it's just a tier B. And that's the same for transparency. So not terrible, but certainly not exceptional. The comfort is great, like we said, with the oval tips, but for us, it errs on the side of comfort. And therefore, after about an hour or less, we certainly find ourselves adjusting the fit of these buds. And we like squeezing, but the stems on these just lack the consistency of Apple's implementation. 
And while these sound great to us, there's no native first party EQ for you tweakers out there. And out of the presets, the others are nowhere close to the Enco X Classic in our view. Only the simple and clear preset is usable. And speaking of squeezing, the juice situation here is average with five and a half hours from the buds and 14 and a half hours from the case. Our unit, when it's using everything on max, lasts for about three hours. But that's not as bad as it sounds. We'll come to why that is at the end of this video. So stay tuned till the end. The charging itself is quite slow, taking one and a half hours to charge the case from dead to full. And much like Apple, things like Dolby binaural audio recording are only available to Oppo Find phone users. What a wonderful world of ecosystem lock-in we live in. And in terms of the world and ecosystems, the environmental sustainability efforts by Oppo are unclear and seem minimal. And yet, yeah, these buds are not available globally. Overall, we recommend the Oppo if a great sound signature, portability and comfort are at the top of your list. It's weird, we're at the lower price end for this video, but we keep coming across great buds that are still great. And the Samsung Galaxy Buds 2 Pro are certainly great. They are compact, fit well in your pocket and in our ears, and look unique too. If you like your buds without their stems, then this might be a very good choice. At IPX7, you can get very splashy with these around water. You get excellent juice as well with fast charging and five minutes of charging providing one hour of use. Always great in the pinch. Wireless charging is also on board. Samsung is also trying to pack these with features. In-ear sensors, multi-point connection across Samsung devices, 360 audio, an experimental low latency mode, and those touch controls. You know what? We'll admit we were wrong when we first review these earbuds. We spend a lot of time with these now and the touch controls, well, they've grown on us, especially that experimental double tap earbud edge for volume control thing. Double tapping that tragus or the top of the bud consistently increases or decreases volume. Very excellent, more excellent. Samsung's transparency has always been top notch and it's an easy tier A. But these buds also have great A and C, tier A again in our view. And what makes it great is that it produces very little annoying white noise. The Buds 2 Pro are also a tier A for sound. We think they're amazing, but the treble can border on too much sometimes. And that's the only reason we'd not put them in tier S. And since you're talking, let's pop, pop, pop to go. Test, test, test. For noisy situations, Samsung gives a more battery intensive calling feature called Sharpen Call Sound, which should improve call clarity. Pop, pop, pop to go. Ice, ice, icicle. As you can hear in the sample, it didn't make a noticeable difference. You heard the background noise, but the voice clarity was fine throughout. But in real life, Rowan called me from Albert Heijn, which is a local supermarket here in the Netherlands, and I could notice a difference. It isolated the voice a lot more and cut out background noise. But you can forget about these buds in the wind. Just horrible. The Fachmann department is decent. You get volume controls, but you need to enable it from the experimental options in the app. Not sure why it's experimental, because it works pretty well for us. And you can also change ANC modes while on a call. No mute here, guys. Now, not all is perfect with the Buds 2 Pro. First off, there's a pretty hard ecosystem lock-in, starting with the sound. The best sound is to be had on Samsung devices that support the Samsung scalable codec. Ditto for the 360 audio feature and 360 audio mic recording. The Galaxy wearable app necessary for changing settings is not available on iOS or any other OS. And that app can change the sound more than the EQ presets. And when I found the S's to be too sharp for podcasts, none of those presets really helped. While the voice detect feature is innovative, it doesn't pause the audio when the user starts speaking, causing an overlap of audio and ambient sounds. The earbuds don't support multipoint connection in the traditional sense, only on Samsung devices. <sighs> ecosystem. The buds are quite small and we can imagine that they don't grip all ear shapes well, which can cause fitting issues and adjusting them leads to some accidental touches due to their stemlessness. And even though we like the touch controls, they're still less customizable and less exhaustive than their counterpart. I mean, even the volume controls are a labs feature that are disabled by default. And actually, that's where most of the good stuff lives, including a super hearing mode, which functions as kind of a hearing aid. The battery life is on the shorter side and it offers just five hours with ANC enabled. The 360 audio features head tracking is less accurate than Apple's spatial audio and seems like an afterthought to jump on the hype train. So who's the Samsung Buds 2 Pro for? For someone who appreciates the Sammy things in life. And if you like listening to your Sam songs.
These are one of the most recent buds we reviewed and pretty much the cheapest on this list. And man, for a little bit of money, you get a lot. Starting with the superficial, the packaging and accessories are on point. The product comes in a nicely packaged box with a good selection of tip options, including foam and silicone tips. The inclusion of different sizes and shapes is great for comfort. They also look kind of nifty with that band running across their face and the LED indicators. You can really free your bird with a battery life of just under 8 hours with active noise cancellation and APTX adaptive enabled in our testing. The experience of using these buds was also quite stable and more bird freedom ensues with a solid multi-point connection and a really stable bug-free app. Extra freedom comes with all the extras like an in-ear sensor. Google Fast Pair, and a low latency mode for gaming. Also in terms of sound, you get a hearing assessment test and you can choose to what extent that applies using a slider. And why don't we pop some pops? Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing, one, two, three. The Freebird did quite well in noisy conditions, except for a bit of car whooshes, the voice was audible. And the same goes for the wind. You hear it a bit, the voice remains clear. Great pick for calls actually. And Fuckman, listen up. You don't get mute controls on the buzz, but you can change volume and ANC if you use the complete set of controls. Let's talk about the sound. These are good sounding buzz, great even. And while we might get some shit for this, we think these buds are probably the ones we least prefer on this list. It's still like a tier A quality earbud, don't get us wrong, but there are issues. The sub bass kind of misses impact, the treble has timbre issues, and while these buds offer great clarity and customizability, they stop short of giving you full EQ control. Another downside is a weird one, volume jumps. The volume jumps on Android were too high for some reason, like two to three volume stops on a phone. Not sure why this was happening, but we weren't the only ones who faced this. The ANC and transparency are both fine, but not great. Tier B for pair dynamic. The ANC actually ends up accentuating certain higher frequencies. The controls are fine, but come with two fixed profiles, none of which is customizable in the app. Overall, the Bear Dynamic Freebird offers a good package at a decent price with impressive sound, reliable connectivity, and solid battery life. Okay guys, what about just audio focus buds, you ask? None of that ANC nonsense. All right, let's do a quick run through of two non-ANC buds that are still pretty pricey. Starting with the Moondrop Alice. They have the drivers from Moondrop Kato and come with two types of tips for getting a good fit. The stated battery life is eight hours and in our DHRME battery test, we got eight hours and 10 minutes. And there was still a bit of charge left in the other bud. So fairly okay numbers here considering there's no ANC. These sound great and have a slight bias towards brightness while avoiding being annoyingly sibilant. And in terms of volume, va va voom, very loud. And they're customizable with a powerful parametric EQ. Sound wise, for us, it's a tier A. What about the microphones? Well, pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. So guys, if you're in a noisy situation, only use the Alice if you speak loudly. Otherwise, you won't be very audible. And although you will hear the wind, you still need to speak loudly. Is Alice a fuckman? The controls are extremely basic. Just answer and hang up. Alice can test your patience and that of the other person on the call. So beware. And guys, Alice's woes continue. While these sound pretty great, I just felt that the sub bass was a bit too subtle. Maybe this was because we struggled to get a good fit even though they are comfortable. That case is chonky and there's also a case for the case in the box. And that box is also way too big and unnecessary. The buds are also large and get more options on the sideloaded app than the official ones. The connectivity is hit or miss with random disconnections from the phone and the app. We got many false taps. And of course there are zero extras here. No ANC, transparency, in-ear sensor to pause music, the ability to change what the touch controls do, no IP rating, no wireless charging, no fast charging. So who are the Moondrop Alice for? For those of you who have too much money to spend, and if you're one of those, maybe suggest becoming a patron or YouTube member of our channel and not waste money on this. All right, let's take off into... Orbit, the Campfire Orbit to be precise. Now, these have the same premise as the Moondrop Alice. True wireless earbuds, no BS, just sound. And you know what? They deliver significantly better. To start with, the sound. S tier, simply fantastic, especially that monstrous bass. You know, these are great for my taste in music with ABTX on board, a seven band custom EQ and a 
crazy high peak volume, these can make your quietest recordings come to life. The EQ presets are now named as opposed to the cryptic numbers at launch and my god these are loud. Usually I'm listening to music at about 50% on a phone for kinda loud. These do the same thing at like 20%. Might be the loudest we have on this list. And you know, it's done very well at the basics. They have a look. Whether the color and the look are to your taste or not, here's some b-roll on that. They have a small case and small buds. The buds feature very reliable touch controls and are IPX5 rated, which means you can take them to the gym. With foam and silicone tips, we thought these struck a great balance between comfort and grip. And yes, you don't have ANC on board, but that passive noise cancelling was actually plenty for our daily use. Also considering this is a first gen product, the app was very well designed and encapsulates all the basics. And while on basics, what about the microphones? Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle. Test, test, testing. One, two, three. Okay, the voice in noisy conditions can sound a bit like it's coming from afar and the cars are audible, but generally they're okay to have a quick conversation. In the wind, it can be a hit or miss depending on the angle of the wind. I wouldn't bet on it and would definitely try to orbit away from the wind. And for the fuck man and amongst us, you're getting volume controls. All right, let's not pull any punches here. These buds are small, but sometimes too small to pry out of the case using my pudgy fingers. The battery life in our test was under five hours, and that's not great considering you're getting no ANC or smart features. There are certainly some first gen issues around connectivity, both to the phone and the app. Nowhere near as bad as the Moondrop Alice, but not great all the same. The default tuning is super congested and doesn't let these buds shine. The bass, while great, is very mid-focused and the treble is not... What's the technical term? The trebliest? Overall, while these work great for our genres, we think hip hop and EDM might suffer a bit. And of course, there are no other extras to talk about here. So who are these buds for? Those of you willing to pay a premium for sound, portability, and a certain look, and pretty much nothing else. My pick is simple. For me, it's the Techniques AZ80. It's a jack of all trades, but a master of none. There are many things that make sense for my use cases. Abundant control options, calls, ANC, and transparency, as well as its killer triple point connectivity. The only downside is the rare connectivity hiccup. Well, you know me, I have decision anxiety. So I'll just say what I've actually been using for most of last year, and that is the Oppo Enco X2. LDAC works great, great sound, comfort, controls, app, multi-point, compact. And since I'm suggesting it to you, you know I cheap. Among the premium ones, these have very good value for money. In my personal use, the amazing ANC and transparency are less important because I try to take my earbuds out of my ears if I'm talking to people because I'm not an asshole. And that probably explains the poor battery life. We didn't have a battery test when we got these and now these buds are pretty well used and that degrades the battery quite a bit. I also use the Campfire Audio Orbit quite a bit, but I'd not buy those if I wanted earbuds. Some other honorable mentions are the Bang & Olufsen X, too expensive, Sennheiser Momentum 3, too uncomfortable, and the Sony WF-1000XM5, slightly less uncomfortable and a weird volume control situation. Thanks for choosing to watch this video and staying till the end. We have a policy of not accepting money from companies whose products we review. And it's you, dear patrons and YouTube members, that are our real sponsors. So thanks for your support. You've been our best buds. And we've been DHRME. Namaste. Namaste.